Hello, class. Um, in this topic, I want to specifically focus on cluster uh, sampling procedure. Uh, cluster sampling methods is also uh, one type of uh, probability random sampling. Okay. Um, the reason why uh, most research want to use a probability random sampling methods is because of the um, generalization ability. Um, if your research result want to be used to generate the whole population, for example, if you want to select a sample and use that sample to the world, then it is impossible to do a survey collecting data, you know, for the whole country unless it's a census, right? Unless you're doing a U.S. census. But uh, imagine, you know, for U.S. census, you can only do that every 10 years. So you can imagine how much money, how much time, and how much effort that you have to put down if you want to cover the whole population. So it is not easy for most research to do a census. That's why um, the sampling process is very important. So if you want to use a subset of a sample to generalize its result to the whole population, then um, a random sampling procedure is a better way compared with the non-random sampling process. Cluster sampling, like I just said, is um, a type of methods that are uh, easier when you don't have a complete sampling frame. So how do we do that? Here uh, in, in this video, I want to provide you a more detailed uh, example. Uh, the cluster sampling is a sampling in which elements are selected in two or more stages. If that's a two-stage cluster sampling, um, or even more than two-stage, we can call that multi-stage cluster sampling, uh, then the first stage of a cluster uh, being the random selection of naturally occurring clustered, and the very last stage um, being the random selection of elements within each of the cluster. Okay, so what is cluster? Cluster is a naturally occurred mixed aggregate of, ag uh, of element, you know, uh, of the population. So within each cluster, uh, you wanna make sure uh, it has a lot of uh, diversity of the population. So each of the cluster um, is very close very closely represent uh, the population. So, okay, when you do the cluster sampling, um, there are generally four stage um, for the process. Uh, stage one, you will have to define the population. So um, you will have to not only get a overall comprehension about the population, you also need to explore uh, within this population, what would be a better cluster. So for example, say if you want to evaluate uh, high school students' academic performance uh, in Beaumont, uh, the largest high school is Westbrook. So say like uh, we're going to evaluate uh, Westbrook uh, students, their academic performance you need to get an idea, you know, approximately how many students uh, uh, for that specific uh, population. Roughly, there are around 2,500 uh, students in Westbrook. And then based on this uh, 2,500, I want to select uh, a sample of 300 students. Uh, when you first define the population, you need to know approximately the overall population, how big this school is, how many students are they. And then in your assignment, uh, once you select the university and you want to, you want to know, you know, approximately how many faculty members 
uh, is in that population. Then step two, after you get a, a, an idea of the population, then you need to create and evaluate the sampling frame of the population so that you can decide what cluster to use. Evaluate frameworks based on coverage and clustering and then so that you can make adjustment. Several cluster can be considered in Westbrook High School. Um, several clusters can be considered in Westbrook, uh, like a student organization or different class um, offered in given year or the di uh, different grade level uh, of the student, etc. And in this case, um, I want to use uh, the classes offered in, in Westbrook as an example. Uh, after I evaluate, you know, uh, this population, and I learned that totally in year uh, 2020, there are a total of uh, 50 different uh, courses offered in Westbrook. So uh, I yeah. have a total of uh, 50 clusters in Westbrook. Um, after you decide what to be your cluster and the number of your cluster, the next step is to select them. Before the selection, um, you will have to first build up your sampling frame. Um, like I said, I have a total of 50 clusters. So my sampling frame will be these 50 clusters and I will have to number them. So I number from one to 50 for all 50 clusters before the selection process. After I number the clusters, then I can use um, the random number generator, you know, the website tool, or I can use a random number table to select the number um, from one to 50 randomly. But how many clusters should I select? Okay, uh, the number of a cluster that you need to choose will be uh, well, depending on how big and how small the clusters that uh, in your population. So for my case, for this example, uh, out of these uh, 50 clusters, I found that the class size range from a very small one, 20 students, to a, a large one, 60 students. In other words, if I happen to select the smallest cluster as my sample, I will have only 20 students. So um, I want to make sure that, um, that every cluster being selected equal, equal number. Out of a total of 50, I can choose 15 of them because the smallest cluster I have uh, is 20 students. So if I select 15 clusters out of 50 total, then I will generate exactly the 300 students for this case. Again, I will use a, a, a simple random sampling procedure, select these 15 number from one to 50, and then I found my 15 clusters. Finally, step four is to collect data from the cluster. So that's basically uh, the process of using uh, cluster sampling. Uh, sometimes you will need more than two stage of a cluster sampling process. So for example, uh, if you want to choose a population, student population from Lamar University, because Lamar University is way bigger than Westbrook, right? So even if you want to select a thousand students, but totally Lamar has like 25,000 uh, students. Right. So um, how do we select a thousand out of 25,000? Uh, it will be quite challenging if you don't have uh, a good plan. One example I can give is that I might need the multi-stage cluster sampling process by start with like a college level. So totally Lamar has five colleges. And then I will select maybe three colleges out of five. 
And then out of the three colleges, I will have my second stage of cluster. And then that can be department. Out of these three colleges, I decided to select maybe five department out of each college. From each of the department, I will select two more courses and then choose uh, the number of students from each of the course. So in this case, that will be a multi-stage cluster assembly. Of course, how many courses from how many departments and how many students is to be selected, you will have to do a calculation uh, based on the sample size 